Hey everyone, it's Robert Hall and in today's video we are going to talk about some changes made to the retouch for me software that I have been such a massive proponent of. Now I'm coming at this from a perspective that you've seen my two previous videos on the retouch for me plugins. The first video was back in 2021. I think I was the first person talking about this software and I just really introduced it and showed its capabilities. The second one I made about a year later and in that video I really focused on how much time it had saved me along with some of the changes that have been made to the software. So if you haven't seen those I would definitely suggest watching them at least before getting into this video but if you want to just go ahead here a simple explanation is that retouch for me offers amazing utilities such as dodging and burning teeth whitening eye brightening eye vessel removal all these automatic software with really good detection so that they make adjustments to the face exactly where you want them but they stay off other things in the image so let's break down what's new there are two new Retouch For Me plugins. The first one is Retouch For Me Mattifier, and that one aims to remove any blown highlight areas. So I'm gonna duplicate the layer of this image. We're gonna go to Filter, Retouch For Me, Mattifier. Now I chose this image because, well, there's blown highlights, but also because it demonstrates both what the filter does well and what the filter does poorly. I'm gonna turn it on here. This is the new layer with the adjustment, and as you can see, it filled in all the areas where there were blown highlights. If I zoom in here, to the forehead and cheekbone. We turn it on, it filled that in with a tone that is more appropriate and more balanced with the skin tone in the rest of the image. That's the good part. The bad part is that it also will pick up on highlights throughout the image. So look at the jacket here, the jacket shoulder. We see all this white area. I like that because it shows the reflectivity of the jacket that she's wearing. When we use this, it just gets rid of all of that, right? That was contrast that I didn't want to get rid of. You have to watch its effect on both clothing as well as backgrounds. Now, there is another utility from Retouch For Me that resolves any issues that you would get from using this mattifier plugin, and that is the Retouch For Me skin mask. So I'm gonna create a layer mask, Retouch For Me skin mask, now, this isn't new. I've talked about it on this channel before. The skin mask is phenomenal for just masking out everything but the subject's skin. So it's gonna mask out the hair, the jacket, the background, and even things like the eyebrows and eyes that, well, you really wouldn't want any skin adjustments to happen to. And this just allows you to get a really nice mask to start with and then apply other filters that they use from there. So now that I have this awesome mask, I'm going to apply that mask to the mattifier layer. So now I'm getting the effect on the skin, but it's not affecting the clothing, the background, the hair, anywhere else. Now, if you're already using Retouch For Me and you're using plugins like Dodge & Burn, Heal, Portrait Volumes, I recommend always applying the mattifier first. That way it fills in those areas before making other adjustments such as Heal, Dodge & Burn, and Portrait Volumes. So it's always the first one to run in an action if I'm applying more than one action. The second new plugin is Retouch For Me Color Match, and this is designed to use a reference photo to adjust the color in another target photo. So on screen is an image that I captured as part of some tier two Chevy marketing for the Silverado that's pictured here. And I'm just not happy with these colors. Particularly, like the sky looks good. I'm happy with the color of the car. I love the lighting direction, the low sun, and just how everything is positioned, but I am not happy at all with the colors, specifically of this tall grass. So I went online and I grabbed this photo, Golden Grass by a Derek Birdsall, and I would much rather this color palette than this one right here. So I'm gonna go to Filter, Retouch for me, Color Match. Now right up here, I have to load a reference photo. I'm gonna pick that Golden Grass file that I just talked about, and you have controls for both the luminance and the color. So with luminance, well, in this instance, I have a black pickup truck as my subject. So if I just use the luminance from the reference photo, it's probably gonna be too bright. Yeah, this looks really bright. The truck looks really washed out. And that's just because there's really nothing black in the target image, right? So it doesn't really have that color information, thus making everything brighter. So I'm gonna bring the luminance way down, but I do think that the color looks pretty good. You can also export this as a LUT so that you could apply it in other methods through batch operations. And once it's applied, mission accomplished. I'm getting more of the warm colors that I was looking for. Here's the before, looks super dull now when you go back to back to this, which looks a lot more rich. And again, that really nice golden hue to the grass. 
Now, I think that this will work best for somebody who's not really strong with color yet in photography. Maybe they're looking online, they're like, I want that level of contrast and I want that type of color grade, but I'm not quite sure how to get there. That's where I think a tool like this would be really helpful because to be honest, for anybody advanced, they can probably accomplish this rather quickly with a few curves layers and maybe some masking options. I'm not sure that this would be a huge time saver. However, the thing that is cool is that you can export a LUT out of this and then work that into batch processing like you can with all of the other Retouch For Me plugins. The next thing I wanted to bring up today is batch processing. A lot of people have struggled with this. They've messaged me that they got the retouch actions, they work on an individual photo, but they're still having problems either applying in terms of batch processing or applying as well as saving. So I am going to include a link in the description below that gives you a link to all of my actions so that you can run them. Uh, these are the five actions that I use most frequently. Now you would have to have all of the plugins that I use, but if you don't have them all or you want to take components out, you can just delete those steps in the actions. But yeah, I just want to put those out there for you because well, a lot of people have asked them and hopefully it'll skip any trial and error issues that you're having in terms of creating your own batch processing. And the last thing to talk about is if you haven't jumped in on these yet and you are interested in them, 40% off today because it is Black Friday. Now this sale started yesterday and it runs through the 28th. So you've got a few days if you are interested in it. I know that one of the biggest hangups to this software for people is its price because I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. They are expensive, coming in over $100 per plugin. And I will admit, if you're not spending a considerable amount of time editing every week, then it's going to be a long time before this software kind of pays itself back to you. However, if you're spending a full workday editing portraits every week, well then this will have a great return on its investment for you. I really believe that I've saved over a thousand hours at this point, just letting this do batch processing instead of me doing manual retouching tasks. This is the most aggressive sale that I've seen on the software. I think we saw 35% last year during Black Friday, 5% more. So, hey, it's the best time ever that you can jump into this. My link to the actions is in the description below, link to the sale in the description below. If you have any questions, leave them as a comment and I'll catch you guys in the next one.